Welcome to this episode of Deciphered. I'm Stephen Walbro, the co-founder and CISO at Halborn. And if you're new to blockchain or not, you probably heard about the Poly Network hack that just happened, where over $700 million was stolen and then returned by a white hat or black hat hacker, depending how you look at it. But we're not really here to discuss who it was or why he stole it. We're here to look at how he did it and analyze the code and figure out what was exploited and how it could have been prevented. Poly Network is a cross-chain transaction project that allows you to move assets or tokens between different blockchain protocols like Ethereum or Polygon. It does this through the concept of lockboxes, which authenticates messages that get signed and validated by a group of contracts called bookkeepers. You could see them here in the GitHub where we have a cross-chain manager and cross-chain data. And this is really where the problems exist. When we analyze the attack, we can see that the attack mainly worked because there's a keeper within a contract called ETH cross-chain data, which can be modified by another separate contract called ETH cross-chain manager. The ETH cross-chain manager contract has a function called verify header and execute transaction. And this function allows the ETH cross-chain manager contract to execute data passed in by the attacker. It does this through a function called execute cross-chain transaction. So leveraging this function, the attacker can pass in carefully constructed data to update the keeper of the ETH cross-chain data contract. So what the execute cross-chain transaction function was doing was calling another function that would update the bookkeepers with the public keys of the attacker. So you may be wondering now, okay, what was put in that transaction though that caused him to be able to upload his public key into the bookkeeper and take control? This is where we have a method that was provided. A method is a pointer to the contract function and it can be generated if you have the right hash. In the case of our attacker, he needed to provide a method ID that would point to the function that updates the bookkeeper with his public key. We can do this with a couple utilities like ethers or four byte. And now that our attacker had his public key updated in the bookkeepers, he could execute any transaction he wanted on Poly Network to steal the funds and send it to his own wallet. So just to quickly summarize, we had a function, a cross-chain manager that was able to be used to send a SIG hash controlled method pointer that updated a keeper that would take a public key from the attacker to give him control of a lockbox and execute any transaction that he wanted. Wow. So what could have been done to prevent this? Well, not having a function that's exposed to the internet that takes user data like a SIG hash or that four byte pointer, that would have been pretty good. Also getting your contract audited and giving enough time for auditors to get into it. This one was pretty clever. And I think even a very good auditor would have missed this one if they were put under pressure. So. I hope you enjoyed this and stay tuned for the next episode of Deciphered. I'm Stephen Walbro. Talk to you soon.